What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Today we are going to dive into the questions from the toolbox, this being a toolbox and the question being inside. And I had a viewer question that I thought deserved a little bit more than just a response on his question. And that is uh, rod oven versus other methods as far as keeping 7018 rods, keeping moisture out of them. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's get into it. So if you're no stranger to stick welding, you've obviously heard of 7018 rods like this right here. And all sorts of companies make them. They're called 7018. That's a classification. And you probably heard all sorts of stuff about uh, rod oven requirements where you have to keep the rods hot to keep moisture out of them. And all sorts of things to, to do with that, right? Well, the question in particular, which I'll put up now, is a very common thing that I read that people ask about. Now, I have done videos explaining what the issue is with rod ovens and moisture in 7018. I'll put a link in the description. Please, when you're done with this video, watch those videos. I know they're a long video, but it will probably answer every question you'd ever have about 7018 and low hydrogen and all of that. But I'm going to make an assumption that you probably won't watch all of that video, and I'm going to briefly cover the problem. So we all know that 7018 is a high strength or higher strength welding rod than 6010, 6011, 6013, all of those, right? Part of the reason why it is higher strength is due to the fact that it is classified as a low hydrogen rod. All that means is that the flux of this does not contain hydrogen aka moisture when it is manufactured so this flux which i'll even show you tends to fall apart and is very very dry and this has been sitting around for a while and likely has picked up moisture but a rod fresh out of the oven or fresh out of the pack the flux just crumbles right off of it there is no moisture in it and that is a great thing because if moisture from this flux finds its way into a solidifying weld pool, which it will happen if you weld with a rod that has moisture in the flux, when that weld solidifies, that hydrogen more or less gets stuck in that solidified metal and can put a tremendous amount of pressure on that material and can cause cracking. And that is known as hydrogen embrittlement or hydrogen underbead cracking. They're referring to similar things there. Now that is primarily an issue with higher strength steels and alloys of steel, where if you try and weld those types of materials with a high hydrogen process, like a great example would be a 6011 rod, which is made with water and moisture in the flux, odds of that cracking as the weld is solidifying or soon after are extremely high. Hydrogen in the flux equals bad on high strength steel. It also equals very bad if you have something like two pieces of plate that are butted together with a gap and you weld that sucker till the cows come home and it's under a tremendous amount of stress because it's pulling together or some kind of very highly restrained joint where you just keep pass after pass after pass and there's all this residual internal stress to that weld that can also cause hydrogen cracking or hydrogen related cracking you're not going to see that type of issue if you're welding car exhaust or auto body typically it's going to be primarily focused on higher strength thicker materials or anything under a lot of restraint while you're welding it Okay, so now that we understand that, the question that the gentleman kind of asked, and this I'm telling you, this is at least weekly someone asked this, is, well, can't you just use a dehumidifier or desiccant packs or something else in order to keep moisture out of the rods? In front of us here, I have these reusable, they're called a dry tote. I bought them off of Amazon. If you want one of them, just... I don't know, Google that, I'm sure you'll find it. But these, you can bake the moisture out of the silica gel in here. They're reusable, and I put them in every MIG and flux core machine I own to keep the wire from rusting. They do help quite a bit with that. I also put them in my toolbox to keep the moisture off the tools, because for rust to happen on tools, you typically need moisture, right? Well, anyways, his question is kind of related to what this is, which is, well, a dehumidifier removes moisture from the air 
and this also removes moisture from the air. So in a small enclosed box of some sort, could you use a small, like some kind of dehumidifier or could you use this to keep rods dry? The answer is yes and no, okay? And what I mean by that is, if you picture this as desiccant, and you picture this flux as a very dry medium that's also very similar to desiccant and it also likes to pick up moisture, what do you think the probability of both of these things picking up moisture in a box rather than just this? The answer is both of them are gonna pick up moisture. Kind of like if you had four of these out in the open right here on the welding table, is one going to pick up moisture more than the other? Probably not. They're all going to pick up moisture. And the other problem is, is that, well, with four, say four of these, is one going to steal moisture from another? The answer is no. Once that moisture is in, say, this rod or in this little bag, another porous or something that really wants water is not just going to pull it out. It's bonded too strongly into the flux of here, just like it is in here. And you have to do something to it to get it out. So you could take a wet 7018 rod, toss it in a bucket with 20 of these, and it's still going to be a wet 7018 rod. Now, it might not have moisture on the surface that you can see, but you have to understand that the hydrogen we're dealing with is so minuscule amounts that can make a difference on higher strength steel that it's not, it's going to look like a perfectly dry rod, but it's still going to impart hydrogen into your weld pool. So the answer to the question is no. Using a dehumidifier, unless it's a rod type that heats a the air to a certain temperature, aka like a rod oven, uh, that will not be effective at removing hydrogen that's trapped in the rod. For the same reason that a fresh one of these next to one that's waterlogged is not going to steal all the moisture out of the one that's waterlogged. It doesn't work like that. So dehumidifier, not really a good thing that's going to work. These things, yes, I do put in my totes that I keep my rods in, and that's just to keep the ambient moisture in it down because rods like 6010, 6011, if they absorb too much moisture, there can be issues with how they run. So I just use this to stabilize, to really prevent rust on a lot of rods that are not low hydrogen. And that works great for that, but it is not an effective means of keeping low hydrogen status in these welding rods. So to simplify what was covered in the videos that I linked in the description, when you buy welding rods that are 7018, many times they come in a hermetically sealed container, like these ESOB 7018 Prime, which this is empty, contains a foil pack that is airtight, and when the rods are manufactured, they have no moisture, and guess what? As long as the seal isn't broke, because it's a vacuum pack, it will be low hydrogen when you pull it out of it for approximately 8 to 12 hours, depending on rod. So if you use it within that time frame, you got to verify by the manufacturer, you have a low hydrogen rod that gives you the ability to weld higher strength alloys without high hydrogen embrittlement issues, okay? So that's a great thing. The problem is, is that in industry, these little packs, you might burn up more rods in this, or you might need more than, you know, 20 packs of this because of the number of welders that you might have. So that's why you go to what's called a rod oven. And let's look at that quickly. I apologize for the camera angle here. I don't feel like taking this heavy bastard down, especially because it does have some rods in it. All this is, is basically a heating element in an insulated tube, and this is designed to keep rods at what's known as a stabilization temperature, which is typically between three and 400 degrees. When you store a rod in that type of temperature, it will more or less keep the moisture off the rod because it cannot absorb into the flux because it's simply too hot. Now this oven also has a capability of baking rods out, which is something that may be required. If you have rods that sat out for a few days, technically per code, you cannot just put them in an oven at 300 degrees and just let them sit and have it meet code. Now realistically, if you were to do that, they'd probably be fine, but I don't think you're gonna find too many high liability jobs taking rods that set out for two days, just put them at 300 degrees 
and calling it good. Either they're going to throw them out or they're going to crank this sucker up to about 550 degrees, which is its max, or use a different oven where they're going to bake out and do a baking process of the rod to bring it up high enough to where all of the moisture, 100% of it, the hydrogen that's in it, is baked right out of it. To learn more about all of that, please watch the videos in the description because I talk a lot about that, but that's kind of like a brief overview. This is a proper device to store and to bake out electrodes properly and per code when you're welding higher strength alloys or anything that hydrogen could be an issue. So I realize this is kind of a complicated subject and you might be confused still on a few things and I'll cover a couple more things before this video is over. But what you have to understand is that stick welding, unless you're using a low hydrogen process, imparts hydrogen into a weld and that can lead to under bead cracking or weld failure due to hydrogen embrittlement. And the simple answer to avoid that problem is to weld with rods out of a hermetically sealed pack such as this, or this also, which this is, has been opened. I took it out of the rod oven, but this is also more or less a spam can where it's airtight sealed. If you use rods out of these sealed packs and do your high liability jobs, especially like say stuff on a tractor that's high strength steel, that's definitely a case that you're going to want to use a hermetically sealed pack or rods out of a rod oven. That pretty much mitigates any risk you have of hydrogen embrittlement. If you choose to store your rods improperly and don't achieve the temperature for the rod oven that's necessary to bake the hydrogen out, then you may have weld failures due to hydrogen embrittlement. It's that simple. Now regarding a proper rod oven, over the years I've had tons of people talk about how they used an old fridge with a light bulb in it to keep rods warm. And I even had one of my neighbors where I used to live work for P&H Cranes and he talked about how they did that in the manufacturing of heavy lift cranes back in the day. And my take is the American Welding Society gives a very specific temperature that the rods must achieve for stabilization. And I have a hard time believing that an old fridge with a light bulb in it would be capable of getting to that temperature without the fridge having melting issues, because you're talking 300 plus degrees. So my take is that if you're burning through enough rods that you really need an oven, then you need an oven. Don't, you know, use a light bulb in a container and think you're good. If you're not achieving the temperatures that are necessary for storage per the American Welding Society, then what are you really achieving? That's my take on it. Again, will it be an issue? More than likely not. You have to understand that success with certain things requires minimum requirements. And sometimes those minimum requirements are set a lot higher than what they really need to be, aka the temperature you need to store these, simply because why set the limit so low that the possibility of failure goes up? Because if you say 300 and people do 150, well, 150 might still work. Versus if you say 150 and people do 100 and 100 doesn't work, you see where you wind up? You have failures. So a lot of it is based on the assumption of super critical, you know, error factor, you know, screw up factor, all of that. But the key takeaway that I want to give this individual as well as anyone else that's watching this video is buy them out of the pack, use them fresh. Keep it sealed. Yes, you can use desiccant in like an old ammo tin for these, and you're probably going to be fine. If you're welding on high liability or high strength steel, always use a fresh pack or use them out of a rod oven. Don't screw around with that. It's not worth the risk of failure. So with that said, if you got any other questions regarding this, I'll feel free to ask. I will answer them. And like I said, I hate to beat a dead horse here, watch the videos in the description that I made regarding a lot of this. You'll learn a lot and it'll all hopefully make more sense. So with that said, thanks for sticking around for the video. Until next time.